Hey everyone, Bernard here on behalf of MovieGameNostalgia.com with another little movie review. This is on a, a movie that, as you're watching, this is currently available to buy. It's on at DVD at fourteen ninety nine. Uh, sorry, DVD at nine ninety nine, fourteen ninety nine, fourteen ninety nine Blu-ray, and it's the personal history of David Copperfield. We're going to have a look at today. Please, if you're new to the channel, push the old subscribe button, push the bell notification, so you know these vlogs and movie reviews and TV drama reviews are coming out, etc. Right, yes, The Personal History of David Copperfield, a comedy drama, of course, based on the Charles Dickens novel. And this stars an, an interesting cast, to say the least. Didn't go down too well with a few people. Um, I wasn't overly sure myself, to be honest with you. Uh, Dev Patel, Anurin Bernard, Peter Capaldi, Hugh Laurie, Tilda Swinton, and many, many more. A lot of familiar faces to uh, the British public as well. Uh, and it, obviously it's the life of David Copfield is chronicled from his birth as he becomes and tries to become both a gentleman and an author. And obviously along the way he falls in love and various other little bits and bobs. Uh, filmed in and around Bury St Edmunds, Weyburn and Kings Lynn. So obviously if you're in any of those places you may see them filming this uh, period drama, comedy drama. Um, it's actually the first David Copperfield actual movie release. We've actually had a made-for-TV effort in 1999, which is excellent, actually. I did enjoy that one. But it is the actual first film release for 50 years, so the last one was 1969. Another one I liked, the 1969 one. Uh, is it any good? Let's see. It's, it's, it's that horrible word, isn't it? An adaptation. Um, you can see the main character there, and that, that caused a lot of... A lot of um, a lot of chagrin with people. Um, we're talking. I mean, we're talking Charles Dickens here. We're talking sticking to to what Charles Dickens wrote, and obviously, um, the, some of these characters in it are not quite physically as Charles Dickens would have wanted, and there's a lot of criticism of that. But I'm obviously, as an adaptation, I'm willing to accept these sort of things, these modernisations of it, if need be. It's needless. It doesn't need to happen, unfortunately, but it does happen, and. Uh, so yeah, I was quite interested in watching this. Obviously, with the with the with the uh, various criticisms it were get it was getting on Rotten Tomatoes, it scored a ma magnificent ninety four percent. That's nine four ninety four percent. That's up based on eighty two ratings. Its overall rating that's that's a positivity rating, but its overall rating is seven point five four out of ten, which is still pretty good. And its syn synopsis, general consensus, if you like, of, of uh, Rotten Tomatoes, a fresh, funny and utterly charming spin on the Dickens classic. Yeah, I mean, the spin is, is probably a good word, actually. Uh, the Metacritic, the Metascore rating, that's the critics, uh, 7.5 out of 10. So again, similar similar overall score based on 19. And it does score anywhere between the lowest 5 out of 10 and the highest 8 out of 10. Uh, some little comments from the critics. Unfortunately, so intent on making every quip funny, you lose the story. Empty gimmicks for innovation, innovative narrative. And bright and jaunty, breathes new life into a well-worn story. Internet movie database. Joe Public, you and me. Again, this is where most of the criticism came. Uh, over three and a half, three thousand four hundred uh, reviews, uh, seventy five percent of which actually score anywhere between six and ten. So overwhelmingly positive, but only coming out with a six point five out of ten overall score, which is a bit lower than the critics' rating. Uh, the positives: vibrant and fun, wonderful, offbeat adaptation, whimsical and fun. So they're all the positives. The negatives: uh, good visuals but disappointing. Not Charles Dickens. It's not bad dreary, underwhelming, yawn. So there's a lot of criticism being within the, within the scope of a 6.5 out of 10. MGN review. Well, Dev Patel did a, did a good job, but if I, if, I, if, I, if I invest in a character 
I, mean, I want to feel that it's right. And obviously, De- Deb Patel isn't David Copperfield for me. I'm sorry. I mean, as I say, it's a modern adaptation of it. So I accepted it and watched it. And he was okay. I mean, he did a good did a good job, good acting job. He sort of held most things together. Uh, but the only real thing I enjoyed was Mr. McCorber. And, he, and even he wasn't to, to, to book, if you like. He wasn't, as you'd imagine, from the books, etc. Or the image you've got of Mr. McCorber. But uh, Mr. Peter Capaldi, obviously playing Mr. McCorber. And I'm, I've, I was one of the... His first critics in Doctor Who, I thought Doctor Who was awful while Peter Capaldi was in it, but you know, there you go, shoot me, I thought it was terrible, not just himself, but obviously the storylines were pretty naff during his tenure, and I think um, Capaldi was just just a poor Doctor Who in my opinion but as a Mr Micawber, although he doesn't really have the sort of girth etc of, a, of a, what I think Mr Micawber has, he does a pretty good job and I, he's sort of for me I, that's the parts of the film when he was in it that I really enjoyed he actually made it watchable for me anyway obviously more than, than, than anything else uh, I much prefer as I said before the 1969 and 1999 versions I'll probably go back and watch them again now just to make, make myself feel a little better it's always nice to see a new adaptation but I didn't find it it was well done it was well put together I think someone said about the um, good visuals but disappointing yeah I mean it was was well together I mean the good sets good cinematography excellent but I just didn't see the humour and, and you know, I didn't invest in the characters, basically, as apart, from, apart from Mr. McCorber. He's the only one I sort of uh, had an affinity to and quite enjoyed. But uh, I just didn't really go with any of the characters and even your people like Til, Tilda, um, Tilda Swinton and Hugh Laurie were OK, but they're only in it bits and bobs, obviously. But uh, I was a little bit disappointed with this adaptation. I, I just thought... It didn't really add to what's already out there, unfortunately. And if something like this is going to come out, certainly after 50 years, the first official film after 50 years, as I said, we had the TV version. Um, I think I want to see something a little bit, all right, perhaps if it is going to be a bit off the wall, off the wall and different, uh, perhaps be totally different, perhaps be set in modern times as opposed to, to set in period times. You know, that's... That's how I see it, you know, play it like that rather than, than, than this, which to me is a bit of a letdown. Um, I'm in a bit of a minority. I mean, most people seem to seem to like it more than I did. It doesn't, it doesn't mean to say I won't give it a watchable rating, you know, my ratings. Um, if you want a faithful Dickens adaptation, which, you know, as I argue for and against these adaptations, but uh, this sort of thing, I do want a pretty pretty um i do want a sort of faithful dickens interpretation on this so as i said unless it's set in modern times and obviously a play on david copperfield i you know I've, i just want something that i can recognize i didn't recognize this as david copperfield unfortunately and i did not see much humor in it that most people say certainly the critics seem to find humor in it that i didn't i just thought it was a uh, pretty weak but overall yeah i watched it it was okay it's not a total disaster. Some people, most people like it, so I'm going to go with the flow. I'm just going to give it my bearable six out of ten, which is my bare minimum for a watchable film. But uh, as I said, uh, 119 minutes as well, two hours, which you would get for this, but it felt like two hours to me. It just just sort of dragged a little bit, and I was all disappointed. Anyway, please let me know in the comments what you thought of uh, the personal history of David Copper. Did we get to watch it, or you've already watched it? As I said, it's out to buy now on $9.99 on DVD, $14.99 on Blu-ray here in the UK. Please check your territories for your, for your relevant prices. Uh, please, for all the latest movie, uh, TV drama news, follow me on Twitter at Nostalgia underscore movie or at Charles Deneen, Deneen spelled D-I-N-N-N-N. I do check every couple of days and follow everyone back who's followed me. So on there, I, I tend to put also some reviews on there that perhaps don't uh, don't are not worth a video, but obviously I've watched films and I do put little reviews on Twitter as well. So if you if you follow that, you'll catch up with stuff that I don't necessarily do a vlog, a vlog for. Uh, also, please follow me on Facebook at Burdenin. Again, I have links on there and links below to my little website, moviegamenostalgia.com. So if you can have a look on there. Fantastic for old and rare DVDs, movie posters from the 1990s and 2000s and some board games as well. So if you can have a look at moviegamenostalgia.com, much appreciated. Anyway, hope you enjoy that little look at the personal history of David Copperfield. Hopefully you'll join me for something else very, very soon. What are you going to do the rest of the day? Have a great one. Look after yourselves, look after your friends, look after your family. More importantly, let's all look after each other. This is Bird saying goodbye for now. Hopefully I'll see you all again soon. Bye-bye.